Good evening. Welcome back to the Glazov Gang. Our gang members this evening, Nani Darwish, a leading freedom fighter in the Western world and the author of numerous books, including Cruel and Usual Punishment. Evan Sayet, the number one conservative comedian in the United States. He has also been ranked as being among the top 25 influential conservative Jews in America. And Ollie Majoy, coming to us from Finland, as well as Australia, he has come with a warning. Do not go the way of Europe and its destructive and socialist path. That warning is to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program. Thanks. Losing Egypt. Nani Darwish is an expert on this for many reasons. Nani, the Islamists are coming to power after these elections. Perhaps it's no surprise. Are you worried for your homeland? Absolutely. I uh, predicted that this was going to happen. Actually, the day <coughs> Obama went to Cairo to, to give his speech at, uh, um, uh, in Cairo, and I immediately knew that it was over for the moderates in Egypt because at his speech, which he gave at Al-Azhar University there, Islamic University, that university issues fatwas of death against apostates. And the President of the United States goes and honors a university, an Islamic university that dishes fatwas of death. Um, Why did he do that? Because he wants to pander the Islamic uh, world. And uh, ha more than half of his audience were Muslim Brotherhood. Is it partly, to some extent, Obama's fault that Islamists have taken power in Egypt? Uh, it's an encouragement. It was going into th that direction, to be fair to him, but he accelerated, he empowered them, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it is a, it's a stage that Egypt was moving towards. Nani, in the West, there seems to be this notion, oh, the Arab Spring, let's get rid of Mubarak, the Egyptians are on the street protesting for freedom. But if the majority of people want Sharia law, is mm -hmm. this not a problem? Yeah, absolutely, and that's why uh, the, this revolution was doomed from the first day. Uh, it, it's doomed because in the Egyptian constitution, Article 2, says that Sharia law supersedes any other law. In Sharia, there is a law that states that the Muslim head of state can come to power through seizure of power, meaning through force. What does that mean? It means that... Uh, how can somebody be elected and then somebody else comes and uh, has a coup d'etat and it's perfectly legal? Nani, with Islamists taking power in Egypt, what does it mean, very briefly, for mm -hmm. Western interests and Israeli interests? Oh, it, it, this is going to be very difficult for Israel, but I don't want us to be too scared because it looks to me that there's going to be civil unrest. Uh -huh. uh, it's not... Uh, they don't have the capacity to go to war. Egypt is in a very bad economic situation. Uh, and uh, not only economic, there is internal problems with the Christians and uh, Muslim moderates. And so I predict that across the Middle East, just, just in Egypt, uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, you know, civil unrest. Okay. And when civil unrest happens, this is a sign that Israel, they shoot at Israel to stop the civil un I unrest. I see. Yeah, they look for that enemy. Ali, how do you read what's happening in Egypt? Um, oh, hang on. I'm to take this glasses off. Those so. looked great, oh, by the way. So and those two people still take me seriously continue to do so. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, it's I, it's really hard to tell uh, at this stage, I suppose. I mean, it, it tells something that the Egyptians themselves have voted two Islamist parties. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have the Salafis, which are the ultra, uh, you know, religious people. And I guess that's really the, the concern that, that, that Egypt would tilt on that side. Well, now is the Muslim Brotherhood going to go that way or is it, is it going to go toward the more moderate way? I guess that's the question because they are really the ones who get the most seats now. Uh, but, I mean, when, when it comes to religion, and, and especially as passionate religion as, as Islam, um, I guess it's not far-fetched to, to assume that it's going to be more toward the religious 
uh, side of things. So. And we're losing Egypt. Evan, yeah, say possibly. it. How do you? How do you? Well, first of all, I, I can't believe that. I mean, what does Nani know about Egypt? Please um, <laughs> let the, let the comedian give you some answers on what's what's going on in okay, Egypt. Okay, let's hear it. First, the the only difference, once again, that I that I have with Nani is um, I, I don't think he went to the university, the Islamist university, to pander. I believe. I, I have an overall theory of how the liberal mind thinks. I don't want to go into it too long. It's the basis of the speech I gave to the Heritage Foundation. But the modern liberal will invariably work to elevate in esteem and stature everything that is evil, failed, and wrong. And since Islam is evil, failed, and or wrong, uh, they, they live in poverty in, in so much of the world despite the fact that they have a, a great deal of oil, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, he went there to elevate Islam in esteem. Um... Uh, what he should have done, and by the way, you'll recall in that speech in Cairo, he also gave a false narrative of the uh, uh, rebirth of Israel. He gave the Arabist, uh, Islamist narrative. Then he went off to visit uh, Germany and, and, and uh, cry supposedly about the Holocaust. But what he was really doing was un, uh, underscoring this notion that the Jews of Israel are illegitimate mm-hmm. and they're only there because of the Holocaust, which is an out-and-out lie and the mm-hmm. Arabist point of view. No matter where you look, I'll sum this up quickly because I know you don't want to give rambling speeches, but no matter, if you don't know where the Democrat, the modern liberal stands on an issue, just ask yourself what works to the image, to improve the image of the evil, failed, and wrong, the terrorists who are now called man-caused disasters Mm -hmm. so that we don't identify them by their religion. If you don't know where Barack Obama stands on an issue, ask yourself what sides with evil, failed, and wrong, and you have Obama's position. Evan, I just want to say very quickly that you're not only uh, the number one conservative comedian in America, you're also a prominent intellectual. And, that I uh, and, you had to now, say now, that. That was that, just obvious. Now, just a second. I know it's <laughs> obvious, but tell the viewers what they can do to see that fascinating and profound heritage uh, speech you gave at the Heritage Foundation. Right, in 2007, I was brand new to... Well, where can they to, go? So I'm going to tell them. I'm telling them. Give me a second. Loosen the light. Uh, all right. But go. Hurry up a little bit. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. Just go to YouTube. Dot com, Y-O-U-T-U-B-E dot com, and type in Evan Sayet, E-V-A-N-S-A-Y-E-T. It's the first talk that comes up. Don't be thrown. I've got long hair in that talk. That's me. The problem was my mother saw the talk and said, cut your hair. And being okay. a Jew, I listened to before, my mother. Great. Now, before we move on, did I mishear this? <laughs> or when, when Ollie took his sunglasses off, you said that he had beautiful eyes. I did. What was all that about? Um, t- I, I, look. I may be conservative in some ways, but I'm liberal. Look, the man's beautiful. Can what are you just, okay, can, yeah, can okay. We, we have to come out of the closet. Right? <laughs> okay, here, now, it, you know, after. let us move on. We are losing Egypt, but are we also losing Europe? We have an expert from Finland who is very worried. I think he's already thought, uh, believes that, let me not speak for you, but that Europe is lost, but he doesn't want America to go in the way of Europe. Uh, Ali, tell us briefly your experiences in Europe, what you thought was a disaster, and what you're worried about in terms of the U.S. Well, you know, it's it's difficult to put in, in really short form, but basically I, I grew up in Finland, which is one of the, the most prominent welfare states in Europe, very comparable to Sweden. So basically you are taken care of from cradle to grave. And I remember growing up and um, thinking that, you know, looking to America as a comparison, you know, obviously in Europe you are not talked well about America. But I thought those guys have something different about them. They're just so full of life. And what is, why is it different from where I live, where everybody just seems to, after they turn 20, they kind of um, just kind of die, you know, and I just get stuck Europe in Europe lacks a certain vibrancy. It does lack a certain vibrancy. So I look to America, but at the same time, I was told that the European welfare state is mm-hmm. the way to go, you know, and it, yeah. it has to be this way. Uh, but really, it, the only way you see it is once you get out of there. Once I moved to Australia, which is uh, far less socialist than, than Europe, mm-hmm. I, I, at first I couldn't believe how well the people were off. You know, they, they drove big cars. And obviously that, that's uh, even more so here in America. But it's such a failed experiment, what's happening in Europe. Right. Would you agree that the European civilization has literally given itself away? Absolutely. Right? It's, and, it's unsustainable. What they have is unsustainable. So if it's unsustainable and if it's a disaster, why is Obama pursuing it? Well, because Obama, uh, I think, in my opinion, wants to emulate the European system. Mm-hmm. 
And that's probably, a big mistake. Yeah, of course. And yeah. probably he perceives that the problems of Europe have to do with something else than the, the, the welfare state mentality, mm-hmm. which really is the root cause of the problems there. Nani, you've seen tyrants come to power. You've known when societies collapse. When you look at Europe, do you find it depressing? Very depressing. Actually, I've been to Europe many times, and I notice the, the people, when you're walking in the streets, I don't see happy people. I mean, when, in yeah. America is unique uniquely an optimistic country absolutely and the people are uh, when you know having come from the middle east the first thing i noticed about americans are they're more cheerful yeah and um, but something about europe in the in the during the obama uh, administration have have gone down more mm-hmm. much faster much quicker not only uh, and i believe that obama's ruining of the us economy has accelerated uh, Europe's decline. Because after all, uh, Europe's decline or, or mm-hmm. you know, is connected to our decline. It looks like Obama. Absolutely. Obama's I, ruining everything, not I just think, in Egypt, but in uh, Europe. Absolutely. I think Obama's de- uh, declining of the American economy is causing world, ah, uh, all of world economy. Oh, it didn't it's last, uh, yeah, go ahead. Didn't he say something about, uh, you know, that America's going to come to the help of uh, Europe if it collapses? Like, oh, for God's sakes, are we now bailing out Europe yeah. too? Evan, last word goes to you. All right, again, let me address Donnie's point, which is I, I'm not sure if the acceleration of, of Europe Uh, failures is so much tied to America now being more like them as it is to the fact that they're 10 or 15 years ahead of us in this failed experiment and and, and it's a ever increasingly downward spiral. You know, you have to remember, Europe killed their Jews, converted their Christians to secularism, so they have no belief and they have few children. So demographically it's dying, economically it's dying. Mm-hmm. And to speak to the happiness factor, one of the most essential aspects to happiness is the sense that you control your own destiny. Yes, yes, that yes. if you have a problem, okay, it's it's unfortunate today, but I know it's within my hands to fix it tomorrow. But when you live in a socialist state where it's not in your hands, it's in the bureaucrat's yeah, hands, it's right. in the government's hand, exactly. happiness is going to be missing. And by the way, one more quick point. There's a book called Gross National Happiness uh, in, in which uh, Arthur Brooks does just, just pure numbers and... Republicans and conservatives are significantly happier in America oh, than our liberals. Excellent point, Evan. Thank Excellent. you very much. We have come to the end of our second segment of the Glasoff Gang. Join us tomorrow evening for our topic, The Road Less Traveled. <laughs>